Do you know that the type of pod you employ for Venus flytraps can significantly affect the health of your plants? My name is Nelly. I have been growing carnivorous plants for about three years and in this channel I share what I've learned so far, some cool projects and techniques. In today's video I'm going to cover why some pods might be very harmful for your Venus flytraps, including an experiment that I've made with terracotta pods. Also, I'm going to share my personal recommendations of specific containers that are great for Venus flytraps. One of the first things I learned about Venus flytraps was that they were intolerant to minerals. Any types of fertilizers or nutrients were actually harmful for these plants. And for that reason, they required carnivorous plant soil that doesn't have any type of fertilizer. And also it is recommended to use water of low mineral content or low ppm parts per million, which is the amount of total dissolved solids, which can be measured with a device just like this one. This is a TDS meter. It costs about $10 and it really saves you a lot of headaches in terms of watering Venus flytraps. The general recommendation is to employ water that has uh, 0 to 50 parts per million. But of course, if you can find water of 0 part ppm, such as distilled water, RO water, or rain water, that will be optimal. But within the 50, it's considered to be acceptable within just the, the community. Another factor related to this is the pots that you employ for your plants. In general, it is not recommended to employ terracotta or clay pots because these materials can end up leaching minerals to the ground and actually harming Venus flytraps. I have heard this statement many times, but I have never actually seen kind of clear proof of how did this actually happen. So I decided to run a very simple experiment just to get an idea of how many minerals are being leached into the ground and kind of at, at what rate. And if that rate is kind of consistent. So what I did is I filled out a terracotta pot, this one right here, and I filled it out with distilled water. Then I got a plastic cup and I also put distilled water. That distilled water is zero ppm. And also, just for fun, I filled up a cup with tap water, just to show you what the tap water quality is in my area and why I always buy distilled water. So what I did is I left the distilled water in those containers and I waited. At the 10 hour mark, I measured again those PPM measurements that started at zero. And I discovered that after 10 hours, the cup, the plastic cup is still red zero parts per million, but the terracotta pot had increased the ppm levels of the water inside of the cup to 4 ppm. Then I measured it again at the 24 hour mark. The plastic cup remained the same, but the terracotta pot read 6 parts per million. And finally, after 48 hours, so at the 48 hour mark, after two whole days, the terracotta pot water measured 9 parts per million, while the plastic cup remained with a water of 0 ppm. So is this a lot? We cannot really tell based on this experiment, but it's kind of a proof that it actually happens. Minerals do leach out of these materials into the soil, into the water. And if you think about it, 9 parts per million might seem low compared to the 50 parts per million recommended, but over time it can build up into the soil, especially if you're continuously watering the plant and the minerals are continuously leaching as we saw in this mini experiment. These minerals that are leached into the soil can eventually produce mineral burns for your plant, weaken it and even end up killing it. So if you ask me is it worth it to use clay or terracotta pot, I would say definitely not. They don't produce any benefit and for really like one dollar, you can get a plastic pot almost anywhere in the dollar store, in the grocery store, or you can even recycle a container to grow your plants that won't be actually harmful. Which containers do I recommend? I recommend that the containers you choose fulfill these three basic requirements. First, it should have drainage. Drainage is very important to prevent rotting. Second, pick a material that is suitable. Plastic, glazed ceramic, styrofoam, those are good materials. And finally, employ pots that are tall. Venus flytraps have long roots and it is 
much better if you choose a pot that is tall enough so the roots can extend and also it actually prevents root rot. You might hear out there that some people use terracotta or clay pot successfully. This can actually be true and be fine. Why? Because first, sometimes terracotta pots can be of different dimensions and made of slightly different materials that might not be as harmful as Venus flytraps than other very similar pots. Also, in my experiment, for example, I used a new pot that might have tons of minerals in it. But some people have a pot for years and they reuse it for their Venus flytrap, but when they use it, the, Venus, the pot is so old that it barely leaches any minerals to the ground. Also, some people use these containers for other types of carnivorous plants that might not be as sensitive as Venus flytraps are to these minerals. That is all I have for you. If you're interested in this type of content, I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and if you want to join the community, it would be great if you can subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.